the rotating revolving door for my left wing backs has taken another twist. As the new season approaches, check this out. We've moved up 59 places. Little Salgueiros are now in the top 50, which has brought a bit of attention our way. How about Portugal? Mighty Liverpool. And the most tempting job offer yet, Brazil. But I had to turn them all down. Because we've got a job to do with this Salgueiros team and this mini rebuild. From last season, we couldn't get Hugo. He's gone to Saudi Arabia, remember. And Capellas, he went to Valencia. Now this meant when I looked at my team and what I was looking to replace, this is probably the biggest first 11 rebuild that we've needed for quite a few seasons. Not helped by the fact that Benjamin Forscher has gone to Sunderland in the Premier League. We sold him for 27.5 million. He came on a free a season ahead of that, so that's a huge profit. But that did mean a gaping gap in them central midfield positions. You'll also notice a big gap, yes again, in the left back position. You remember we had Pep and Lot on loan from Barcelona. The deal was done. It was done. But I hate this man. I don't hate Pep. He was ready to come, but his agent kept moving the goalposts, asking for stupid things. Deal fell through. So we brought in 34 million. Another player leaving us was centre-back Chao Amaral. We brought him from Brazilian football years ago, but we got a good fee for him. 3.4 million. He leaves us after six seasons. 34 million out meant 16.7 million in, which is the most we've spent in this serve. First man in was central midfield to replace Capellas. Silvanio Vos came from West Ham on a free transfer. He's 29. Starts his career, by the way, at Ajax, if you fancy picking him up. Speaking of experience, Billy Gilmore comes in. He's 33. I wanted to get a bit more experience around all these young players because I've got wonder kids galore now. Gilmore comes in. He'll play central midfield. Another free transfer. Filippo Mane comes in from German football. He's a great young player. You can get him from Borussia Dortmund at the start of the serve. He's either going to play on the right-hand side if we play the more defensive fullback, or he can play central defence or a bit of a destroyer in midfield. Two balls to the squad. The next player in was from Thailand. It was Sarakan. Now, he cost us 2.7 million from Japanese football. He's going to be a more of a ball-winning midfielder when we need to lock a game down, but his physicals are elite. Look at them. OK, wonder kid alert. This is Sergio Pozo. He's came in from Chilean football from Colo Colo. They like to think he's a left-back. I see him as a centre-back. Only 19, he's already got 10 caps for Chile. He's cost us 4.7 million, so quite a big outlay. But his current value was shot up already to 23 to 32. Looks like good business. Also from South America, from Peru to be exact, Oscar Azario. He's a 23 year old striker. He's going to be a target forward. He's 6 foot 6, by the way, jumping reach of 18. Going to offer us something a little bit different. So we've been working hard in the off season with scouting focuses, with suggestions of the director of football. And then there was one tab that I've totally forgot about. And it is the shortlist tab. Now, I am really bad for adding a player and just putting them on here indefinitely. Years ago, and I totally forget, totally forget that they're on there. This happened with Adam Asnew. Now, he is in the game. He's not a new gen, regen. He starts at Bayern Munich second team. I've wanted him for ages. I added him ages and ages ago. Look at all the positions he can play. He's a key, key player. We've actually signed him now from Malaga. Hello, Trek. For 5 million. Biggest outlay we've ever done. 5 million. Initially, I thought I'm going to play him at left wing back. More on that later. But he can also play on the right. Quite got an eye on him to play in central midfield as well. Just a good all round player. Again, peak age at 28. So I urge you to get back to your shortlist and have a look through it because honestly, some of these lot on here have been on there for season upon season, thinking about the future. And I totally forgot about them. But now I've got a chance of getting them. So it's a new season, but I've kept my staff pretty much the same apart from one. Luis Bomote got stolen by Villarreal. They stole him off us. So naturally, we replaced him with Alex Awobi. Who else? <laughs> right? But his people management is really good, which is what I like. And his preferred formation is narrow, which is kind of what we're playing. So he seemed a good fit. So we qualify for the Champions League, but we have to qualify for it. And the first qualifying round was a tough looking game against Galatasaray. In the away leg, we absolutely bossed it. A stunning, stunning result. And by the way, look at a few of the names in the Galatasaray team that they've got at the minute. Baku, Mason Mount, Nicholas Jackson, Ben Brayton Diaz. I mean, they're getting old and the legs started to show. Pretty comfortable tie that. The next one was PSV. This was a bit closer, but a game we played really well in the away leg, beating them in Holland. Which meant we have qualified for the Champions League proper and we're going to be playing against some of these big, big teams here. Just waiting for the fixtures to get announced. As the season got into full flow, so did we. 17 games unbeaten now. Do you remember all those problems we used to have against Braga? 
Well, no more. No more. So a really nice start to the season. Let's keep it calm though. We started like this last season, fell away a little bit. We've changed a tiny couple of things in the tactic, a tiny couple of things. The first one, we've got a ball playing defender now when Pozo plays, because he's that good. The second one, we've settled on an inverted fullback role here instead of the inverted wing back. So he sits back a bit. Now you might have noticed a few new names in that highlight. And here's one of them. This is Jorge Hernandez. Right, I've just got him on loan from Bayer Leverkusen. He's an attacking midfielder. In theory, he's there to replace Felix. His finishing stands out like a sore thumb on 19, but he's got so much standing out. We've got a future fee locked in for him, which is pretty reasonable as well, at 17 million. I'm gonna get him in the team as soon as he gets his fitness up. And you can see Asno is currently in that left wing back spot. There he is, but, but the rotating revolving door for my left wing backs has taken another twist. With this tactic, I've got laid out the ideal guy for that left wing back spot in real life would be Davis at Bayern Munich. Now, obviously, I am 12 years in, so he's going to be a 34 and we probably couldn't get him anyway. But I think I've found the next Davis. So there is Davis's profile when you start the game. You can see everything that stands out there. His physicals are ridiculous. That acceleration and pace on oh my days. His crossing's okay, could be better, but dribbling, the flair. It's fantastic, he'd be the perfect wing back. Now, let me show you Maurizio Susano, who I've just got on loan with a view to a permanent move. And here he is, he's on loan from Hoffenheim. He's already been capped by Portugal, two caps, one goal. They are stolen from a lower league team years ago. But look at what we're looking at here. The acceleration, the pace, the crossing ability, the dribbling, the mentals. So if I put these two next to each other, you can see what I'm talking about now. You can see why I'm potentially really excited about this guy. There's not a lot of difference there, is there? The attributes are very, very similar. So he's got to play, he's got to play. I'm just going to get him fit and then he's in the team. The guy that was there, Asnu, who I've been chasing forever, can definitely do a role though. He could probably jump into there. Potentially we can get more expansive with this role. We've made a second alternative tactic for that. Here it is, you can see I've got a double complete wing back pushing Maini on a bit. This is one I'm toying with that we might jump into purely because I've got two really good wing backs now. So let's not get excited, but we are sitting top of the league. We've only played three times. All the other teams have played five or four, so it's a pretty damn good start. Couldn't have asked for a better start to the season. Once we get those two new players in as well, there could be fireworks. So we'll see how it goes. There might be a few days before the next video because apparently something's going on in the world.